I'm going to show you guys how to prove the identity sine square theta plus cosine square theta is equal to 1. And this is how we are going to do it. We are going to start off with a right triangle, and then we draw a right triangle this way, putting the right angle here, and this is the angle theta. And I will label this right triangle to have the sides A, B, and C. And let's talk about something real fast. Based on this picture, can we tell the sine of theta? Well, in a right triangle, we have to remember what's the definition of sine, right? This is the angle theta. When you go away from this angle, we have this side here. This is the opposite side. So let's label that right here. And then the B, this side down below here, is right next to this angle theta. So B is the adjacent. And then C is the longer side. So that's the hypotenuse. Sine theta in the right triangle by definition is the opposite side, which we have A, over the hypotenuse. So we have just A over C. That will be the expression for sine theta from this right triangle. Likewise, can we also do cosine theta? Well, by definition, in the right triangle, cosine theta will be the adjacent side, which in this case will be the B, over the hypotenuse, which is also the C, right? Alright, so these are the ingredients that we need, and we also need to borrow one of the most famous formula from geometry, the Pythagorean theorem. And let me just write this down for you guys right here first. Okay, so this says when we have a right triangle, we must have a square plus b square is equal to c square, and the c it has to be the hypotenuse. So the sum of the square of two sides has to be the square of the hypotenuse. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is the equation from Pythagorean theorem, and this is how we are going to continue it. I'm going to look at this equation and then divide everything by c squared. Okay? And let's take a look on what we will get. For the first part, we have a squared over c squared, and this is what we can do. Because both of them have the second power, I'm going to just look at a squared over c squared as a parenthesis. For the inside, I would just like to put down a over c, and then we have the square on the outside, right? Because we can have the a square over c square. You know, just another way to write it. Likewise, for the second part, we'll do the same. So I put down the parentheses, and then because we have the b square over c square, I'm just going to look at that as b over c in that parentheses, and then raised to the second power. At the end, we have the equal sign. And this is c squared over c squared. Of course, they cancel each other out to be just 1. All right, so now what can we do? Well, a over c, as we talked about it already, that is just sine theta, right? So I'm going to look at this part, and let me write down the parentheses again. And inside the parentheses, for a over c, that's just sine theta. So let me just put that down right here. And then we still have this to the second power. Then we add it with parentheses b over c you know the deal that's why we did this earlier b over c is cosine theta so let me just put it down here and then we have this to the second power as well this is equal to one okay so we have sine theta and then square plus cosine theta and then square is equal to one and this is how we usually write down a statement usually when we have sine theta to a second power this means sine theta times sine theta, okay? This is how we like to write it down. We can put down the square right here. So we have sine square theta. They mean the same, okay? These two mean the same thing. And then we can say this is plus, and we do the same here. Cosine, put a square here, and then we have the theta, and all this together is equal to one. And this is one of the most famous and one of the most used identity that we'll be seeing later on. And now we have this identity. I wanted to show you guys another version of this identity that involves tangent and secant. So by looking at this, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. I'm going to first divide everything by cosine squared theta. Okay, divide every term by cosine squared theta. And the reason I want to do that is because if you look at the first part, sine over cosine, we know that's tangent. And then here we have the sine squared over cosine squared, right? 
So we can look at this as tangent square theta. And then we add cosine square over cosine square. That will be just 1. And then this is equal to, we know, 1 over cosine secant. But here we have 1 over cosine square. So this is going to be secant square theta. And this is another version of the identity. And now another similar identity. Instead of dividing everything by cosine square theta, let's divide everything by sine square theta. We are just going to work this out. Divide everything by sine square theta. And in this case, first we'll get sine square theta over sine square theta. That will be 1. And then we add it with, when we have cosine over sine, that's cotangent. But here we have the cosine square theta over sine square theta. This is going to give us cotangent square theta. And then this is equal to, we know 1 over sine is cosecant. But here we have the 1 over sine square. So this is going to be cosecant square theta. So this will include all these three identity that involves the Pythagorean theorem. These are called the Pythagorean identities. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys find my video helpful, please subscribe and share this video with other people who you think that they will also find the video to be helpful. And as usual, that's it.